Hello, my name is Abel and I welcome you to this brand new tutorial on how to create mobile UI for your mobile game using the Unity 5 game engine. And first of all, I want to thank you all for your wonderful comments, your suggestions, the tips and your feedback on what I can create for my future tutorials. I really appreciate it. And I really hope that together we can contribute more to the gaming community and help all of us create more and more awesome games. Okay, so let's get started here. First, let's have a demonstration. Let's hit the play button. And we get something like this. This is a scene that I created for this demonstration. We have mountains, we have trees, and we have these crates and the familiar cat character from our previous tutorials. And then this is the new edition. These are your mobile controls or mobile buttons. And in just a few moments, you'll see that it's really very easy to add these mobile buttons and create a script, which will be multi-platform, which means you can use your keyboard as well as your mobile controls, these buttons here, control this character. Let me show you. I'm hitting the arrow keys on my keyboard. The left arrow key is gonna move the character to the left, the right will move the character to the right, and the character's got its own animations. And when I hit the up arrow key, the character's gonna jump, okay, like so. So, and we can accomplish the same using these controls here. This guy's gonna move left and right, and uh, the A button will help the character jump, okay? So we can sort of get this guy to jump across the crates and it can come back and sort of kick these crates and you know do all kind of crazy stuff so yeah in this tutorial i'm going to focus on how you can set up these ui buttons okay these mobile controls okay so let's get started okay now we're going to start from exactly the same point where we left in tutorial number three for creating 2d animations using the unity game engine so if you haven't watched that tutorial you might wonder what these folders are. Well, this is the animation folder where we created your animator controller for this cat game object. And we have these couple of animations here and you can watch them inside the animator panel. And uh, if you're if you're watching this for the first time and you're confused about animations, um, you might want to watch the animations uh, tutorial. It's a three part series in which I talk in detail about how you can set up all of these animation states and you can set up these transitions and how you can use these parameters and then change values in the parameters to switch between animations and also how you can use scripting c-sharp scripting to automate the whole process of switching between the animation states so with all the groundwork about animations covered uh, let's look at the sprites which we will require for this tutorial okay now you can look in the descriptions column I have provided a couple of links from where you can go ahead and download the sprites. And once you have the sprites downloaded, uh, please make your folders inside the sprites folder like you see here. Okay, we have the BG folder for storing the background. And at this point, I introduce you to this slider. Okay, it's a very useful tool when you're working with images because at this point of time, all you see is these titles, right? You really cannot make out what the image is. So when you slide this to the right, this will magnify any object that's inside this folder. So it's more appropriate for you to work with images. You can actually make out what the images are. So in the ground folder, you can import these two tiles, okay? And in the items, uh, we can have a crate and this sign sprite. And in the players, we have this cat folder where you have these different sprites for the cat game object. And in the UI mobile folder, please import these four sprites. Okay, once you have all of these sprites and these folders set up, we'll be good to go to, to drag and drop them inside the scene panel and start creating the interface for this tutorial. Alrighty, so the first step, let's highlight the game object cat here in the hierarchy panel and let's look in the inspector panel. Okay, you have these couple of components attached to this game object. So we're going to be working with the transform component and the property called scale. Okay, scale is how tall, how wide, and because this is a 2D project, we're not going to be bothering about the Z axis. Okay, this is useful for three dimensions. 
So this is the width of your game object and this is the height, okay? The X and the Y axis. We're gonna shorten the cat. We're gonna change this to point three and point three, okay? You'll see when you start making the ground and you import your background and stuff. So together, the cat is gonna look good. So point three is good. Um, so now let's look inside the ground folder and we're gonna go ahead and create the ground for this purpose, okay? Now, in the hierarchy panel, please right click and create empty, okay? This will create an empty game object, okay? And if you look inside the inspector panel, this is the title of the game object and every game object will have the transform component attached to it by default, okay? This is very important. Transform component will give these three properties to a game object. Position inside the scene, the rotation, and the scale, which essentially means the height and the width, and position is x and y coordinates or location within the 2D space, okay? If you notice, the x and y is not zero, so we're gonna first thing learn how to reset it. Okay, let's look at this gear icon. When you click this gear icon and select reset, it's going to reset all of these properties to default. So by default, the position is zero, zero, and zero, okay? And if you highlight the game object here and you select this guy here, this button, okay? This button is for moving a game object within the scene panel, okay? And I've, I'm going to be covering these details about working with the Unity editor in some future tutorials because these are the basics. So if you're not comfortable, I encourage you to watch some YouTube tutorials or refer to the Unity documentation. And uh, here's a good point to introduce you to the Unity documentation, which comes bundled with Unity. If you need to look up information about any particular component, you have this, this book icon here, right? When you click this book icon, Unity editor is going to open its own help manual and show you the exact information about that particular component. So in this case, we're referring to the transform. And as you can see, it's got some couple of uh, information here. You can watch what position, rotation, and scale does, and so on and so forth. And I really encourage you to have a look at this documentation and keep it handy and refer to it from time to time because this is the knowledge base which will become base for your Unity skills. So for now, let's go ahead and close this and uh, getting back to the game object and the transform component right let's click the gear icon and let's reset it to zero 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 okay and now let's drag and drop this particular tile or sprite inside the scene panel like so okay and now if you've noticed unity just created a game object for you okay all the game objects live inside the hierarchy panel and the name of this game object is the same as the name of the sprite okay Anytime you drag and drop a sprite inside the scenes panel, Unity is going to create a game object for you, okay? The game object will have a transform component so that you can determine the location or the position of the sprite inside the scenes panel. And it's going to provide you with a sprite renderer component. This is a new component for you. And if you remember, we discussed about the blue book, right? Anytime you get confused about a certain component, uh, I would encourage you to start by opening this book icon. This is going to launch your Unity manual that's locally saved on your computer. And here's the information about Sprite Renderer. The Sprite Renderer component lets you display images as sprites for use in your 2D and 3D scenes. So there you have it. If you look at these properties like sprite, color, material, sorting layer, ordinal layer, and you want to know what these are, so all the information is given here. Now, what's a sprite renderer? This is a component which shows you the sprites. And how it shows you is by allowing you to specify a particular sprite in here. Okay, you can drag and drop your sprites in here. Uh, if you want to change the sprites, you can simply drag and drop a sprite and it just changes here. Okay, so for now, we're going to use this particular sprite. And the color of the sprite is, is, let me show you, you can sort of, you see the color is changing, right? It's as if a spotlight is fallen on the sprite. Uh, this is a red spotlight, and uh, this is a blue spotlight, a green, and a yellow. 
So by default, it's the white. Now material is for 3D games. For 2D, you have a default material, the sprite's default material. Um, but the real magic of material can be seen in 3D games. Okay, so we're, we're not going to bother with material here. So sorting layer will help you determine which game object will come right in the front and then which will be in the second position, which guy comes in the third and fourth and so on and so forth, and which of the guys is the last. Okay, you're going to see in this tutorial what the sorting layer does and why is it important. So now let's rename this, this tile to ground tile and let's drag this Y axis handle and bring this guy and let's change the scale to 3 3 here okay now we've got a decent amount of ground here if you look inside the games panel I, I recommend when you're designing your games uh, you might want to switch to the game panel here and the scene panel here and then when you move items around you get to see exactly how they would appear inside the game so uh, I guess this looks pretty okay because here's where your mobile buttons will appear so I guess we'll leave it at that point now this is a ground tile and this is your empty game object called ground right now we're gonna go ahead and uh, let's first see the y position it's minus 3.96 so we're gonna copy this and paste it in here like so so this game object now is in line with this tile here now we're gonna go ahead and drag and drop this tile inside the ground game object and this essentially establishes a parent child relationship now that sounds complicated but it's very simple this empty game object ground will now become the parent for this particular tile or this game object so when you move this ground game object the tile will move along with it okay now this is an important concept you will be using this concept a lot in video games especially with unity game programming so it's it's a good idea to get used to this concept of creating empty game objects to kind of become like boxes or store storage containers for other game objects right and that's how you can build complex hierarchies of game objects so for now we have this one tile now right click on this and select duplicate okay like so and this will create another copy of this ground tile so you can change this and call it ground tile okay like so now by default when you duplicate it all the properties the position rotation scale everything will be identical to the first one so you might want to go ahead and move this out like this and then I introduce you to vertex snapping so when you hold down V key on your keyboard you would notice that this snapping starts to happen okay as you move your mouse around any of the edges or vertices the handle will follow you you can simply hold down the left click on the mouse and drag and this will snap and get attached to the vertex of the first available ground tile okay this is called vertex snapping and this is very useful for creating your 2d uh, levels now let's go ahead and do this one more time and this time we will duplicate using command D or control D on Windows command D is on the Macintosh so let's hit command D and this is going to duplicate your tile again again we will move it out like this we will hold down the V key and like holding the left mouse key we will drag and drop it here so now if you notice you're creating the entire ground right so let's quickly go ahead and do it let's copy these two tiles or these three tiles command D to duplicate you have three more drag and drop them outside like so and then hold down V and on this edge hold the left mouse button drag and drop it and this will snap everything in place now we just need one more command D to duplicate it move it outside like so hold down the V key snap it on this edge hold down your left mouse button while holding the V key and drag and drop so so you've got this entire ground made so let's kind of adjust it like so so you have 
a perfectly looking ground, okay? And now to keep this video a bit short, uh, I'm going to stop this video and we'll continue in the next video. Um, in the next video, we will go ahead and set up the background, the crates, and the signpost, and then we'll go ahead and tag each of these game objects. I'll show you what tagging means, and then we'll go ahead and create the scripts, and then create the mobile controls, okay? So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.